Hello everyone, today I'm gonna be going through step by step with a live patient on how to make a dental crown. This is Dr. Tamisha Dennis and this is The Modern Smile. And the reason it's part one, this is the first. So today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to make a dental crown part one. And the reason this is part one or visit one is because a dental crown typically takes two visits to make. The first visit is what we call preparation. And the second visit we call the seat or the insert of the crown. Mm -hmm. so, we, so we prepare the crown on the first visit and on the second visit, we'll put the crown on. So. Just really quickly before I start the video, I'm going to go through quickly how the steps go. First visit, we prepare the crown, we take an impression, we send it to the laboratory. The laboratory, we, you go home with a temporary. The laboratory makes a permanent crown. They send it back to us. We take off your temporary and we put on the permanent. That's the short version. So stay tuned and watch the rest of the video to see the actual things that happen during that appointment. Now, this patient, even though he's a friend of my dental assistant, he really didn't want to be on video. What I did is I took pictures along the way to show the process. So before we talk about what happened to him in particular, we're going to go back in time to about a year ago. He had a really large cavity on, we're going to call it tooth number 19, not to get too detailed. And tooth number 19 had a really big cavity. Originally, we thought we were going to do a root canal, but unfortunately, as the procedure went, the tooth broke apart in a lot of pieces because the decay was too far gone. So we decided to pull the tooth and its place placed an implant. And we also, because he learned his lesson, we also did a lot of other fillings. The tooth right behind it, which is tooth number 18, which is what we're going to be doing a crown on in this video, um, that also had a large cavity. And what I did is I went ahead and filled it. I went the conservative route. He wasn't having any pain on it. It was quite large but at the time a filling just made the most sense. So um, after we did the implant, as you can see in this picture, you'll see the implant on the front and then you'll also see um, his tooth behind before it broke. So he came in a few days ago and what happened is he was having salmon and he broke his tooth. The reason it's important and I always laugh at patients because they'll come in and they'll say, Dr. Dennis, I was eating a donut. I was having salad and my tooth broke. Donuts, salad, oatmeal, cereal, do not break teeth. Normally you have either a structural issue, meaning you have an existing crown or filling, I'm sorry, you have an existing filling um, that's really large and the tooth cannot support biting, in his case, or sometimes you have a really big cavity and the tooth becomes so weak, you just eat the softest of things and the teeth break. I rarely get anybody who comes in and says, I was eating ice and my tooth broke, even though that happens too. All right, so um, what we decided, um, as you can see in this picture, because the we call it the distal buccal cusp, meaning the backside of the tooth and the part near his cheek was broken, and already about three-fourths of the tooth was already filling, then we needed to do a crown. So the first um, thing that we do is get you numb. So the first thing we place is a little topical anesthetic. The topical anesthetic prepares the area for the shot, and everybody hates the shot, but it kind of dulls the area. I would liken it something to like or gel um, it's actually benzocaine right so we swab the area and then after that we're gonna give him a shot and I numbed him all the way in the back he couldn't feel his tongue his lip pretty much half of his lower half of his mouth one quadrant the lower left quadrant after I numbed him then what we did next is we prepared the tooth and we prepared the tooth by drilling around it and the closest shape I can think of how it is is kind of like a square and um, so you'll see kind of the tooth um, prepared around or drilled down if he had had a cavity and that was not his case because I had just done a filling about a year ago before it was just broken if he would have cavity had a cavity I would have done what we call a buildup and a buildup means I'm going to fill the cavity underneath where we're going to do a crown. So um, if you can see, it's drilled all around, and it's a little blood just because in the process of drilling, I touched the gums a little bit. Remember, he has no pain. He's completely numb, felt nothing at all. After that point, what we do is we take an impression. 
some dentists will pack a little cord we call a retraction retraction cord to push the gums down in order to get a really nice mold we use two kinds of material one thicker material one lighter material we call it light body and heavy body and then we just have you bite down on this material so that it can make a mold of the tooth. So if you can see on the other side, you'll see an impression of the tooth, of where the tooth and where what we call the margins are, and the lab is going to use that to make the permanent crown. Now, right now, I make zirconia crown. Zirconia crown means that it is a ceramic substrate that is all white inside and outside, as opposed to the crowns that used to be popular, which were porcelain fused to metal, meaning on the outside of the crown, there is porcelain and on the inside is metal. Zirconia is very popular now because not only is it cosmetic but very very strong. So that's what I use in my office now. So the next thing that you're gonna see is um, temporary material. We use Pro Temp and what it is is an acrylic based material. Once upon a time we used to use acrylic. Yes, kind of like the stuff you get on your nails but um, for my female patients. But the acrylic material we put into the mold that we took at the beginning and that you could see that blue mold. We syringe that into that area, we press it onto your tooth and it makes a temporary crown or kind of the shape of a tooth. I say it's never gonna look as good as a permanent crown, but we did a pretty um, decent job. My assistant made that temporary crown. So we use some temporary cement to cement your temporary crown. We take our um, impressions that we took of the tooth and we send it off to the laboratory for them to make the permanent crown. So so that's the end of the process of how to get a dental crown. Now, when we when he comes back in about uh, two weeks or so, I'll do another video, and on that video, you will see us take off the temporary crown, try on the permanent crown. We take a series of X-rays and stuff like that, make sure everything is good, and I like it, and that it feels good in the mouth, and then um, we go ahead and cement that with permanent cement. So stay tuned for that episode coming up. So I hope that this video helped you. If you are planning to get a dental crown sometime soon, and just wanted to know what the process was like, hopefully that takes some of the fear and anxiety out of it. Really, I mean, with most dental procedures, you just gotta get past the getting numb part. Once you get past that part, everything is easy, easy, easy. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or you wanna share some of your experience, please leave those comments be below and make sure to like this video and also to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching.